we are in the middle of the woods. Looking for a single grave over here. Robert Murray, Valparaiso, Indiana. This is uh, Sunset Farm County Park. I guess he donated the land. But he's buried in the middle of the woods out here. So I'm going to try to find that. And then we'll go over to the farm and I'll show you all the things they have over there. I think he owned 265 acres maybe out here back in the early 1900s. So let's go through here. I got him locked in on GPS, the grave site. So let's see if we can find it. All right, we're on the right track. Oh yeah? Looks like the arrow's pointing that way. Okay, thanks. All right, we're getting close here. Died in 1972 and was buried here out in these woods. That's pretty cool. I didn't know you could actually do that in the 70s. Oh, right here. Here he is. Bench there. Check that out. In the middle of nowhere. Robert Halfrain Murray, business executive and farmer was born in Chicago, October 18, 1881, son of George William and Cora Murray, grandson of Robert Henry and Mary Murray, and great-grandson of James Valentine and Harriet Murray. His great-grandfather came to this country from Scotland about 1783 and settled in Providence, Rhode Island. His father was a lawyer and teacher. Robert H. Murray received his preliminary education at public schools in his native city and at the Lewis Institute, Chicago, and was graduated B.S. in 1904 at the University of Chicago. He later completed courses in mechanical and bridge engineering, courses taken through the International Correspondence Schools, Scranton. Meanwhile, he was engaged as a laboratory assistant in chemistry while an undergraduate. After serving as vice consul for the United States in Hamburg, Germany in 1904-5. Murray returned to this country in the latter year and joined the Paramount Knitting Company as assistant superintendent, later becoming superintendent and manager of a small textile mill owned by the company in South Boston. In 1908, he moved to Kankakee, Illinois as manager of the Paramount Knitting Company in that city. In 1910, he joined the Chicago Bridge and Iron Company, Chicago, as a supervisor of construction and in 1912 was made vice president in charge of all the operating forces of the company, in which capacity he continued until 1917. In 1917, Robert joined the United States Army as a captain in the Army Reserves. He was elevated to major when ordered to report for deployment to Europe during World War I. Upon return from active duty in Europe, he was once more promoted this time to lieutenant colonel having earned the title Colonel Murray after military service during the First World War period. In 1921, he went to Laconia, New Hampshire, where for the next five years he was plant manager for Scott and Williams, builders of knitting machinery. Upon returning to Chicago in 1926, he went to work for Henry Pope, president of the Bear Brand Hosiery Company. The firm had a distribution problem, and Murray conceived the idea, original at that time, 
of establishing retail stores specializing in hosiery. For that purpose, he founded the Nimode Hosiery Company in 1928 and served as president of the company from its inception until 1970, when he became chairman of the board, a post he held until the close of his life. Under his leadership, the business expanded from one small shop in Aurora, Illinois, to more than 132 stores throughout the Midwest, administered from the headquarters office in Chicago. In 1927, sales were $380,000 and there were 18 employees and 12 stores as compared to sales of $6 million, 300 employees, and 95 stores in 1972. The company also acted as wholesaler to various food chains. In addition to his principal business interest, Murray operated a farm near Valparaiso, Indiana. Beginning with a 100-acre tract in 1936, he increased his holdings to some 235 acres and planted the non-herbal portions with more than 50,000 evergreen trees. In cooperation with J. Rockefeller Prentice, and with the Animal Husbandry Department of Purdue University, he developed a dairy herd of mixed breeds. Built up by methods of artificial insemination from proof sires, he also sold milk and eggs through a retail outlet on the farm which operated successfully for some 25 years. The farm was an operating dairy farm until 1978. Colonel Murray was kind to all of his patrons, erasing all balances at the holidays. The land and farm operation were bequeathed to Purdue University for agriculture and education uses. As early as 1915, Murray, anticipating the involvement of the United States in the First World War, organized the Ridge Rookies in the Morgan Park area of Chicago, a military unit that drilled weekly for the period of a year under the supervision of the common down to the corps of cadets of the Morgan Park Preparatory Schools. In 1917, he was commissioned a captain in the Engineers Officers Reserve Corps and was ordered to active duty at F.T. Sheridan, Illinois. He served with the, the American Expeditionary Forces in Europe from September 1918 to June 1919, serving successively as commanding officer of the 311th, the 304th, and the 21st Engineers. He left active service in the rank of lieutenant colonel, continuing his interest in military affairs. During his residence in New Hampshire, he helped establish the state's infantry reserves and was made colonel of the 387th Infantry Reserve during the Second World War. In 1943, he was a member of the 6th Region War Labor Board. He was a member of the American Society of Mechanical Engineers, Delta Kappa Epsilon, New Hampshire Reserve Officers Association, American Legion, Chicago Farmers Club, Laconia Sled Dog Association, St. Andrews Society of Illinois, the Valparaiso Country Club, and the University and Quadrangle Clubs of Chicago. Furthermore, he founded and laid out the Laconia Country Club golf course and was a founder of the Winniposaukee Ski Club, both in New Hampshire. Politically, he was an independent Republican. In his leisure time, he was a reader and essayist, particularly in the fields of geology, American foreign policy, and theology. He was married twice in Chicago, Illinois, November 4, 1905, to Sue, daughter of George and Emma Horton of that city. His first wife died in 1960 to in Valparaiso, January 11, 1964, to Elizabeth Howland Allen, daughter of James Weber, widow of John Bolton Allen. Robert passed away in Valparaiso, Indiana on October 28, 1972. His legacy was to leave his land to Purdue University. Purdue did not have a need for the property. His second wish was for the property to then be developed into a park for the citizens of Porter County. All right, now we'll go over here to the farm and show you some of the things they got there. He was a great man, that's for sure. He helped a lot of people out. We'll stroll over there. 
there's a lot going on over there. So let's go. Over there in the distance there, that's the farm. After the corn was gone, the animals, the animals left by the snow trail one by one and disappeared into the winter woods. It was a chickadee who took the last seed and flew away. <laughs> No man stood alone, but only for a short time. Where'd he go? Old outbuildings, that's for sure. We got a bunch of buildings over that way. history here. Look at that building. Now I got some super old equipment in here. Check these out. Wow, look at that. Wonder how old that is. Wow, look at this. Look at all this land, beautiful. Got some more really old equipment in here. Look at this. Oh, look at that back there. What is that? Some kind of conveyor system type thing. Wow. 
another building here full of equipment. Horton Families Children Education Center. That's awesome. Robert Murray. Appreciate you watching the video. If you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing. Help the channel out. Maybe help out the algorithm. Give me a like. Appreciate it. We'll see you on the next one. Be safe.